Should Christians be involved in politics or should there be a separation between church and state like we've been told? Well, in this video, we're going to investigate and get down to the nuts and bolts of why it's important for us to actually care about all of this. I'm going to show you a video that changed my perspective on this, and I hope it might bring some light to your perspective as well, whatever that means. Bring some light, shed some truth. Make sure to like and subscribe. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I feel like a detective. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't, but liking really helps this video get out to more people. More people need to learn about Jesus and the truth. So you make a difference. Let's check out this video that I'm telling you really changed my perspective. This is Pastor Jack Hibbs from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, and he's a great pastor, believes in the Bible, and doesn't, you know, pick and choose scripture. You know, it's all God's word. Pastor, you can't mix religion. And this is someone telling him this, okay? He said, Pastor, you can't mix religion and politics. My friend, you cannot separate religion and politics. Listen, the two powerhouses of our world to control your life, your children's life, are two things. Either bowing down to the God of government with the little g, I like the stress, little g government God, or you will stand and serve the great G of God, the God of the Bible. And listen, let's remember this. Our God created government. What you and I don't like about government is that man, unbelieving man, has created politics. Big difference. Government's great when it works right. Proverbs 29 verse 2 tells us that when the righteous are in power, people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, the people groan. That's powerful. And he talks about this. Proverbs 29, 2. When go the godly are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they groan. Okay. And it reminds me, right? America, if you look at its roots, it was founded by believers, by Christians. And most of the universities in this nation, Harvard, Yale, all of them started by Christians. Most of the major hospitals in America started by Christians. I mean, the reason why America has flourished for all these years has been, has been because God has blessed this nation for following its, its ways. We know as Christians, you sow what you, you reap what you sow, okay? So if you're planting good fruit, you know, good fruit, a good tr tree is going to grow and it's going to bear good fruit, right? Like, because it's godly things, right? There's a blessing, right? Sin leads to death, the Bible talks away, but God's way leads to eternal life. It's really that simple, okay? So Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. See, we're living now in a time where America's become more secular. The values are more postmodern. You know, there is no truth. All truth is relative. Your truth, my truth, we all have a truth. Well, that, as we know, is simply not how the world works. Two plus two is four. God created order in a structure, and there is a moral order given to us by God. And we could go against how God created us as male and female and all these different things, and we have chaos, and that's what we're seeing in our nation today. But the thing is, if people don't know the Lord, they're not going to fear him, and fear being in awe and reverence, right? Uh, when we fear the Lord, we want to follow his ways. We want to read our Bibles. We want to do all of these things because we know he is God. We're not. We're the created. We're, he's the creator. We're created beings, okay? But fools despise wisdom and discipline. So we're living in a time where in our government, there's a lot of foolish things happening, a lot of foolish laws being passed. And the reason why, in my opinion, is because a lot of Christians have taken for granted their religious freedom and their freedoms in general that have been given to us by God, and they're not voting, and they're not being a part of politics, well, really government. As Pastor Jack said, politics is like a perversion of government. Okay, politics is what man has created, right? Because the government should be to serve the people, enable us to live a good life, right? But obviously, we have to pay taxes and do all these things to support all of it. But the government has not been about the people, okay? You see these senators, you see these politicians using the government to better themselves, right, than the people they're, they're supposed to serve, right? They're called public servants, right? But lately they've been more like, you know, kings and queens or more like dictators, as we've seen America become. 
And I want to show you some Bible verses like Romans 3, we see. Uh, Romans 13, 1, actually. Let every person be subject to governing, 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 sorry, I can't speak today, authorities, for there's no authority except from God. And those that exist have been institu instituted by God. So it says this, like, the structure of government has been put in place by God. And, and the Bible talks about all rulers are in power because God lets them be in power. But there's also verses that say what happens when we are in a governmental kind of structure or society that's not following the Lord. And Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. And this reminds me of when they tried to shut down all the churches during the the sickness that happened the last few years. Oh, you can't go to church. Oh, pastors can't go to hospitals to minister to the sick and dying. It's all an agenda, okay? This is all, we fight against, the Bible says, fl not flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. We're living in a spiritual battle between good and evil, okay? So we're now in a time where our government in America, and if you're watching from around the world, you might be in a place that's currently oppressed, like China, North Korea, where if you're in some other parts of the world, like China, North Korea, you're not allowed to read your Bible. You're not allowed to share the gospel in Iran, or you'll be killed. But do we listen to our, this government, or do we listen to God? And at the end of the day, we must obey God rather than man. So if someone tells you you can't share your faith, you must share your faith. You must read your Bible in public and do all of these things because we answer to a higher power than government. And you see in 1 Timothy 2, okay, one thing that we're supposed to do is pray for all people, but pray for people who are in authority. Even people you might despise, people you might think that are wicked and evil. It says pray for them so that we could live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. And I think too many people, myself included, we don't pray for people who are in government who might we might think that are evil because they're against Things like they're against the unborn, they're against our biblical values, so we don't pray for them. But that's not right. We need to pray for them. And I want to show you, let's talk about what happened to followers of Jesus Christ, okay? Because they were living in a world not too different than ours, to be honest, okay? Um, you know, Roman in Roman times, okay, if you didn't, in a lot of the different Roman cities, if you didn't worship Zeus or uh, Aphrodite or some of the different gods, you would be martyred. You would be killed for not like confessing that even Caesar is God. Okay. So let's look at what happened to the 12 apostles. Okay. And because they're a good example of, uh, for us, for, I don't want to say what might be in store, but, but just the realities of being Christian, being a Christian isn't supposed to be some easy cushy life where we have a white picket fence and everything's good. Okay. And prosperous. It's just not. Being Christian is about picking up our cross daily and making hard decisions to follow God, okay? And be a light to a world that needs to know about Jesus Christ and the hope of Jesus, okay? Peter and Paul, both martyred in Rome, okay? Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down because Peter didn't feel worthy to die in the same manner as his Lord. What a rock star, Peter, okay? Wow. Andrew, okay? He, he was in... Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey and Greece, they said he was crucified. Thomas claimed that he died when pierced through with the spear of four soldiers. Ouch. Philip, he converted, he converted the wife of a Roman proconsul. In retaliation, the proconsul had Philip arrested and cruelly put to death. Matthew, stabbed to death in Ethiopia. Bartholomew, various accounts of how he met his death as a martyr for the gospel. James, Jewish, the Jewish historian Josephus reported that he was stoned and clubbed to death. I mean, person after person, okay? And if we look at Open Door, it's a great website where you could actually see all around the world. By the way, like this video so more people could just learn about the gospel and what's going on in our world. If you look at Open Door, okay, you could see right here. Not so much persecution happening happening in America right now. They have different levels, okay? High, very high, and extreme. But right here, it says more than 360 million Christians suffer high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith. That's huge. That's almost as much as the entire population of the United States, okay? So most of the world we see 
actually live in persecution, okay? Um, and, you know, we don't see some countries here like Canada in Great Britain where they're now persecuting Christians and stuff. But these are more extreme versions here on this map. But you see Libya, most of Africa, all of the Middle East right here, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, India, um, China. I mean, it's insane, guys. So we're just very, look at 5,621 Christians murdered last year because of their faith. And I think this probably, this number is probably a lot um, bigger than this, but this is probably documented um, that they received. But China probably does that many in a day. Churches attacked 2,000, Christian, Christians detained 4,500, okay? Christians arrested in the UK. Look at this. Just Google that. Look at all these charges happening in the UK, okay? Canada, Christians arrested. Look at all these things. I mean, you could do the research. You could check this out yourself. There's Christians right now in Western countries being persecuted left and right. So I started out this video saying, should Christians care about politics? Yes, you should care a lot. If you're in a country where you still have the freedom to vote, you need to vote because I think that it's something like over 30 million evangelical Christians, Bible-believing Christians, aren't registered to vote or they're not voting, something like that. You could look it up, okay? These numbers are public, okay? And for us Christians not to vote, it's a shame, okay? Because our children, grandchildren, maybe you don't even have children, but children in your church, the next generations in America might grow up in a country that looks less like America and more like China if we don't speak up and if we don't make a stand and if we don't get out and vote. And no, um, everyone you vote for isn't going to be like Jesus Christ, okay? They're just not, okay? Like, but sometimes you have to vote for someone who protects religious freedom and who are, you know, a pro-Bible, pro-biblical worldview. Someone who even protects Muslims' right to worship, Buddhists' right to worship. Like, you know, so what we're looking for are people who their ideologies, their beliefs are the closest to the Bible. So sometimes it's picking, you know, a lesser evil, you know, than one candidate to the other, right? But, you know, there was only one perfect person, that's Jesus Christ, okay? So these politicians aren't supposed to be our saviors, but um, we are supposed to vote for the people who are more biblically grounded, okay? And we need to do that because if we don't speak up, this country is just continue, going to continue just to go off the deep end. And I believe it's because a lot of people are just afraid to talk about politics and um, all of that sort of stuff. So don't be afraid. Be a light because that's what Jesus calls us to be. And if I showed you all those different apostles that were martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ, okay? Being a Christian, it's not supposed to be easy, okay? Because Jesus, you know, upsets a lot of people, okay? And he shouldn't, but people don't want their dark deeds exposed. And when people learn that they're a sinner in need of a Savior and that the way they're living is not the right way. It's going to lead them to death and, and separation from God. Some people don't want to hear that. And sometimes all we could do is pray for them and just be a light to them. But, but that's why Jesus said, so they're going to hate you because they hated me first. So if they're hating you, it's because you look like Jesus, which is a good thing. Okay. You're doing, you're doing your job. So make sure to like this video so more people could see it. Okay. And also subscribe for more videos like this on a weekly basis. I'm going to be doing these daily. And if you want to join my private community, discord, Patreon, check that out below or just help support my ministry. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.